This week on the show, we have Pastor Calvin Robertson, who is a relationship and marriage expert in the hit reality show, Married at First Sight. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding, avoiding following the crowd, and instead paving your own unique path. In reality, most of us go through life conventionally, following the norm, rules, and conditioning that society makes us believe. Whether it's having to get married at a certain age or giving up what we're passionate about to grind in a job that only pays the bills. But who's to say that this is the way we're supposed to do things with our precious time? When you learn to live life on your own terms and not based on what is expected or societal pressures, you pave your own unique path that you can feel good about and be proud of. After all, life is too short to be a slave to what other people think you should do or be. Making your mission today to tackle something you've always wanted to do but have been too afraid to go after it because of other people's opinions or what the world will say. Ultimately, if we look at any of the greatest leaders or trailblazers of all time, they follow their own path and stay true to their vision and passion. As the great Mahatma Gandhi quotes, it's better to walk alone than with a crowd going in the wrong direction. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, as a relationship expert, what are the main relationship concerns that you usually see and how do you come to a resolution? And can you give us an example? Wow. <laughs> I think that some of the biggest challenges I've seen, um, you know, when it comes to traditional relationships or, or even something as, as, as strange as married at first sight is people's ability to change. You know, mm, I tell them, yeah. uh, oh my gosh, you know, I, here's the, here's, Daryl, here's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in a relationship. When someone has said, you know, don't change me, mm -hmm. you know, accept me exactly how I am. Now I understand philosophically what they're saying. But the fact of the matter is, you don't want you don't want to be the way you are. You don't want to you don't want to be the way you were. My wife and I we've been married now, now for a few decades. Uh, you know, there's over two decades. You get me for that. But you know, <laughs> we're married now, and and the thing is, there's no. I'm not the person I was when we first got married. Neither is she. We're changing constantly, and every experience we have in life, and every challenge we have in life, every success, every failure, it changes us. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Pastor Calvin Robertson, who is a relationship and marriage expert in the hit reality show, Married at First Sight. Calvin, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I am awesome. Thank you so much, Daryl. It's a pleasure to be here. and Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I'm very excited to talk to you. Happy holidays. I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's been a great holiday season. I mean, a lot of family time, a lot of family time. You know, not as much snow as you guys in Toronto. But <laughs> we're enjoying it. And happy, uh, sorry, happy new year as well, because by the time this airs, it's going to be the new year, 2023. So it's going to oh be a, You, you good believe one. that? 23? I can't believe it. This year has flown by, but I'm ready for a new start, new beginnings. Excited to see what 2023 holds. So, so yeah, excited to see. And speaking about 2023, Married at First Sight, before we get into the success of the show, I want to talk a little bit about you and your background. I know you've been saving relationships for over 20 years now, but, you know, let's talk about your background. I know you went to school for law and theology. So how did you essentially marry the two passions uh, to become a relationship expert? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, um, when you look at theology, which is literally the study of God, um, you know, who, I mean, who can study God, right? But when you look at theology and then you look at law, it's all about um, values. Um, you know, law teaches, you know, legal values and legal systems. Uh, theology talks about, you know, the values of, of, of religion and religious systems. And you can't speak about values unless you speak about people and how we relate to one another. And I guess so I, I've been able to marry those two because everything I do is about relationship mm -hmm. and whether I'm, I'm, I'm teaching about how we relate, you know, vertically and horizontally to one another and to our God or higher power or, or how we um, relate to one another in, in, in any other aspect of life. It's all about relationships. And I've been counseling couples probably for the, uh, like you said, I guess about 25 years, actually, wow. I'm going to years. And uh, it's, it's been a pleasure that I've been able to marry all 
my you know educational disciplines as well as life experiences into this this phase of life now. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel that religion strengthens the bond in a in a unity or a couple relationship, whatever it is, uh, whatever the religion may be? Yeah, I you know. I think it's important. I, I, there's a body of work out there which says that uh, you know when people have shared values and shared belief systems, that it really adds to the foundation of the relationship. In fact, I was reading one from the American Psychological Association, which says that when young people or children are, are taught in some kind of belief system coming up that it gives them a foundation uh, and, and that helps them to build and stick into relationships. So I believe the religion, well, I believe the spirituality plays a big part in keeping people together, having the same spiritual values. I'm not gonna say necessarily religion because sometimes religion, I mean, you know, depending on what your religion is, can be positive or negative. Yeah. But I do believe that, uh, that uh, you know, having common beliefs, common languages, common goals, a common understanding of your future and of your presence and why we are here. I think it it it, it serves just massive uh, degrees of success in relationships. Mm -hmm. I agree. And you know, as a relationship expert, what are the main relationship concerns that you usually see? And how do you come to a resolution? And can you give us an example? Wow. <laughs> I think that some of the biggest challenges I've seen, um, you know, when it comes to traditional relationships or, or even something as, as, as strange as married at first sight is people's ability to change. You know, mm, I tell them, yeah. uh, oh my gosh, you know, I, here's the, here's, Daryl, here's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in a relationship. When someone has said, you know, don't change me, mm -hmm. you know, accept me exactly how I am. Now I understand philosophically what they're saying, but the fact of the matter is, you don't want you don't want to be the way you are. You don't want to you don't want to be the way you were. My wife and I we've been married now, now for a few decades. Uh, you know, there's uh, over two decades. You get me for that. But you know, <laughs> we're married now, and and the thing is, there's no. I'm not the person I was when we first got married. Neither is she. We're changing constantly, and every experience we have in life, and every challenge we have in life, every success, every failure, it changes us. Yeah. And the beauty of relationship is learning how to accept and embrace those changes and realize that, hey, I have something new that I can learn about you each day. And that's the biggest challenge I've seen. But people, you know, don't want to change that just stay as you are. No, that's that's a recipe for failure. You no, know, you have to grow. The only evidence of life is growth. And as mm -hmm. you grow, you got to learn. You got to over communicate. You got to understand each other. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, do you think love is enough to make a relationship work? Based on your experience with the show and in general, do you feel that love is enough? Wow, wow, great <laughs> question. You know, it depends on how you define love. Mm -hmm. If you think that love is a feeling, you know, when I, I, I just, you know, I can't live without you and I'm just gushing over you and oh my God, I can't breathe. Yeah, that sounds, that's a virus, that's not love. Uh, but if it's just those feelings, then maybe it's not enough because feelings come, feelings go. And uh, but but when the way I look at love is that love is actually a principle. It's a decision we make to fulfill another person's legitimate needs. It's a commitment. And if I'm making a love commitment to my mate or to my partner, then that means that each day I'm recommitting. Yeah. Well, that 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 technically is enough. If every day I can recommit to you, every day I can see something different about you, every day I can say, you know what? No matter what we went through yesterday, today I promise to be with you the rest of my life. That type of love, that understanding of love, yeah, that is enough. But if it's just a feeling, it's very vacuous. Mm -hmm. I think that's very true. And do you think we should accept people the way they are? Like, I feel like in relationships, a lot of times we try to change, as you said, we try to change the person. So do you think we should try to change the person or should we accept them exactly the way they are? I think that you have no choice but to accept someone with the way they are when you meet them. Yes. You know, when I meet, when I met my wife, you know, I accepted her where she was, as she was at that point. Was I expecting her to change? I was expecting her to change into whomever she wanted to be. Just like I'm, I'm changing into who, who, whomever I want to be. But so I, I don't think that you can change someone, but I think you need to understand that people will change. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as they change, you have to accept them at each step along their change journey. You know, but to say that, hey, accept me the way I am. Don't ever try to change me. You know, I, I think I think it's a little short sighted, you know, mm -hmm. because look, any successful relationship, you're going to influence each other. 
you know, uh, you know, the husband's going to influence the wife. The wife's going to influence the husband. Uh, people will say, I mean, people tell us all the time, wow, you guys kind of look alike, which I think is an insult <laughs> to her. I think it's a big insult to my wife, so I always correct them. But, but people say it because you change and you influence yeah. each other and you start to start to, to, to be a part of each other. That's the whole definition of the word marriage. Two things coming together, blending to become one. Everything's going to change. Yeah, absolutely. And season 16 of Married at First Sight is going to be launching. So what can fans expect? And for you, what's been the best part of being on the show? Oh, wow. You know, the best part of being on the show is the ability to uh, create families, man. I, I, I think, Daryl, that, uh, you know, when we see, what, almost uh, over 12 couples, um, almost close to 14 couples that are still married and, you know, 12 babies. I mean, that that mm. does it for that yeah. does it for me. yeah so it, it, it's a wonderful thing to see that i know i i'm it, you know what do you think the process does work in real life once it translates into the real world you what well, you mean the married at first sight process? yeah <laughs> <laughs> look I, I i think it's a radical <laughs> you know borderline insane process that as i said has produced us uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know over a dozen marriages yeah. and babies so it does work the process, it, what, but the way we do it works. I wouldn't suggest anybody goes out and finds a stranger <laughs> on the street and say, hey, you're my wife. But no, but um, I believe it can work. I think that sometimes we we need to understand that marriage is more than just, just feeling. Uh, you know, over 70% of marriages worldwide have some sort of arranged uh, manner to them. And those arranged marriages have over a 90% success rate. So it does work. But in the West, where we're so focused on romantic marriages, and swiping left and right. And I mean, that's the biggest complaint I hear about people is I'm so sick of dating apps and, and swiping and it. It's just annoying. So uh, my, my greatest joy here is, is being able to circumvent all that and, and find people they're made. Mm -hmm. And speaking about marriage, I know you have a book, Marriage Isn't For Punks. So tell us about the book and you know what people can take away before even getting married some some uh, information on it <laughs> oh absolutely yeah yeah it's called marriage ain't for punks and i think you did it the you did it the grammatically correct way but it's marriage ain't <laughs> <laughs> ain't for punks yes <laughs> marriage ain't for punks you can get it wherever books are sold um it's a book that basically deals with um all uh, my goal was to take all the, you know 20 some years of a marriage experience and to put it in one place where people can get advice so we talk about everything from communication from conflict resolution from how to apologize. I mean, something as simple oh, wow. as whether or not you're apologizing proactively, reactively, or inactively. I mean, just some things like that. How do I categorize people once the relationship is over? Where do I put them in my life? You know, um, and, and the book has been such, such a, a, a blessing, you know, that we've even followed the book up with an app uh, that we are going to be uh, uh, launching uh, you know, in the earlier part of next year. You can find out more about that at marriageaidforpunks.com. Uh, but it's an app that's even going to help people further. If they want to be married, they can uh, uh, go on this app and we're going to match people, but not for dating, but only for marriage. It's only for marriage minded people, not for people who want to Netflix and chill. We're turning, <laughs> we're changing it from a, from a mate market, from a meat market to a mate market. That's the whole idea. <laughs> And you know, for our viewers that are, you know, single looking for love, 2023 is just around the corner. What would you say to them? What is the best way to do so if they're not successful in it so far? You know what? It's funny because the old way of finding love still exists. And I think it's the most effective. I think that, you know, as I just mentioned, you know, that, you know, uh, social media has really kind of, kind of messed us up because we, we, it's almost like every time you go out with someone, it's a new interview. <laughs> you know, yeah. you have to, here's my name. Here's what I do. You gotta, and people are so sick of it. I think going into the, this new year, we have to start reconnecting with humans face to face outside of just, you know, this disposability, this disposable way of communicating, you know, and which is why we, we have the app, because it, it's not it's not you can't swipe. You know, you fill out a questionnaire and we choose uh, you're made for you. But um, I, I think that people are going to have to go back to being referred to someone. You know, who do you know? My wife and I, we do it all the time where, you know, people say, well, can you find me somebody? I say, no, hold on, you know, because we have our own little Rolodex. 
<laughs> so we'll go back and we'll say, you know what? Well, I have a single friend here. We have a couple who just got married this year that we matched last oh, year. Oh, wow. You know, so it's 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 really exciting. Uh, so I think that people need to get back to the old way of dating one another and taking each other out and being kind and being chivalrous and 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 taking your time and and getting rid of the whole idea of just looking at facades and is she fine is he, he is he fine no when it comes if you want a real marriage you're gonna have to look beyond that because when you're 60 70 80 years old nobody looks fine anymore <laughs> you know there has to be something more in depth to hold on to and that's what we're trying to uh, trying to accomplish yeah, absolutely. I think with social media now, it's so easy to get infatuated with someone based on the image of them, right? Not really who they are, but the image of them. So I like that you touched base on, on that. I think that's uh, really important. And for our viewers that are in relationships, may, maybe even married right now, um, maybe they lost the spark. They're not seeing the passion. What would you say uh, to what relationship advice would you give them to kind of get yeah. the spark back? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Um, I think and I sort of touched on it briefly just a little bit ago when I said, you know, as far as change is concerned, understand that the person you are with now is not the person you were you were with when you first met them. And quite often when we talk about getting the spark back, we're, we're, we're trying to reignite something that we had. But you're never going to have what you had. You're going to have something new. Mm -hmm. And I think that people need to understand that it's okay for you for you to change and to, to fall in love again with mm -hmm. the person that you're with now. Mm -hmm. um, the same values, the same basics are there. Uh, but people change. It's like the same the same content but different wrappings. So you have to sort of fall in love with the new with the new wrappings, the new bows, the new colors that we become each day, um, and and believe in your believe in your 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 spouse and 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 learn to forgive. You know there was an old saying, a happy wife, happy life. You know, and and we have completely dismissed that because I don't believe it. I believe that if there's a happy spouse, there's a happy house. And so if both parties are happy, mm -hmm. the whole home is happy. And you can only do that by communicating and getting to know each other and rediscovering each other every day. That keeps the spark going. I'm happy to say, you know, after being married for this, for as long as we have, people say, oh, are you guys real? Yeah, it, it's real. I mean, we fight, we argue, we have issues, but no, I mean, yeah, we, we, still, we still spark. So <laughs> it's, it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I like that, that you said, you know, you grow together. You, you can't expect the person to be the same person you met them 20 years ago or five years ago. People grow and evolve and you should grow and evolve too, right? So I, I like that. You, you know, it's the you whole know. idea behind love. Like we talk about love. I, I, and I say this so much on the show that there's no such thing as falling in love because every time you fall, you get hurt. It's, it's about growing in love and growth takes time. And when you grow, you have, you're an active participant in that things, that things, uh, uh, that love's outgrowth. You can water it, you can nurture it, you can do what, you, you contribute to it to make it what you want to be. So, you know, if you want to keep Spark, learn how to grow in love and stop mm -hmm. falling. Yeah. And Calvin, you know, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift people. Um, so I want to ask you for any of our viewers that maybe are doing the right thing. They're putting themselves out there. Uh, they're a great catch, but they're not finding love and maybe they're giving up hope. What would you say to uplift and encourage them? Yeah, first of all, and I hate to, but it's a shameless plug, go to marriageinfopunks.com. <laughs> yes. That's the first thing. Uh, go there and, uh, and and sign up because, we, and, and I say that, but it's not just a plug. We actually, I, that is a serious challenge. It's a serious issue. I was on the phone with someone just yesterday, and they were talking about that very thing that, you know, a good guy seems, this is a guy, good guys just don't seem to find love anymore. It's like, you know, everyone wants a bad boy or what have you. And, and a great, great guy, but you know, he just wasn't able to, just not able to find the right person. And, and if, if that's your case, first of all, I want you to look at where you, where you are, where are your social circles, because there are a number of places where we find um, people to match with um, our school environments, our work environments, our social gatherings, whether it be churches or what have you. And let's see, what are you doing? Are you taking advantage of those environments? Um, I know of another gentleman who's looking for a right. I want a traditional woman. I want this kind of woman, you know, and and I'm not I don't I don't want her to have to cook and whatever, but I want someone traditional. I said, well, are you at those places where traditional women are? And so I said, look, go to your church. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, go to a social club, you know, join a young professionals club. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
be in places where the people you want are. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great advice. Calvin, thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm very, very excited to watch season 16 of Married at First Sight. I binge watch all the episodes, so. It's, oh, uh, wow. It's <laughs> yeah. going to be so exciting. Season 16 is going to be, it's going to knock your socks off. It's going, it's going to be so awesome. I, I can't wait to, I even I lived it. I can't wait to see it again. Amazing. Well, thank you for being on the show. Happy 2023, and we hope to have you on the show soon. It'd be a pleasure. Take care. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm.